that's a great day. Medical Monday. Stroke is one of the most common causes of death and disability in the U.S. What you do in the first minutes is important, and so is the aftercare. Here to help us treat and identify the signs of a stroke is Dr. Yazan Alderazi, vascular neurologist with Memorial Hermann, the Woodlands Medical Center. Good morning. Thank you. Stroke is one of those things that for a lot of people just kind of comes out of the blue, but uh, a stroke can occur every 40 seconds. Yes, so about 800,000 patients in the United States have a stroke every year. That's the same number, of, similar to this, the same number of the patients that have heart attacks every year. Wow, so okay. it's a very common condition. Yeah, yeah, and what are some of the things that can kind of set you up for having a stroke? Uh, the two biggest risk factors overall are high blood pressure and smoking. Um, both. Uh, we've done a very good job in the United States about reducing. However, there's a lot more room for improvement. Yeah, all right. Time is of essence when a stroke occurs. So first you have to realize that you're having one. Sometimes people uh, may have had strokes and never really realized it, but what are some of the obvious signs that, that may have happened? Yeah, so we like to put a, a, a mnemonic to help people remember mm -hmm. it. So B fast is what we use nowadays. B stands for balance. So patients that can't uh, stand and walk across the room or, ba or back. Uh, E stands for eye problems or vision problems. Typically, patients with a stroke can't see out of one side of the, of the their visual field. F stands for face, so ask the patient to smile. If mm -hmm. they're drooping on one side, that could be a stroke symptom. And A is one of the most important symptoms. So ask the patient to raise their arms. If their one arm is dropping down or they can't lift it, that's a major sign of stroke. And last thing is speech. So I usually tell the patients, uh, or family members tell the patient um, to repeat after me, today's a sunny day in Houston. Mm -hmm. If they can say that clearly, that's reassuring. If they have any difficulty understanding or, or formulating the sentence, that can be a sign of a stroke. Yeah. And at that point, time is of the essence because what is happening inside the body when there's a stroke? So the majority of strokes occur because there's a blockage of one of the arteries in the brain. About 90% of the strokes occur that way. And uh, that blockage in the artery is depriving that part of the brain from getting blood flow and nourishment. Mm -hmm. So it starts Oxygen. to get damaged, yeah. exactly. Okay, uh, so treatment, uh, what do we do today that might be a little bit different than we did before? Yes, yeah, so the, the major advance in treatment is for our most severe types of stroke that are due to large vessel occlusions, which are small three millimeter arteries, they're still tiny. Yeah. Um, uh, we can do mechanical thrombectomy, where we go in with tiny catheters inserted through the arteries in either the leg or the arm or rarely through the neck and we go all the way up from inside the arteries and open up the blood vessels. Yeah, okay, show us what you have over here. Yeah, this so is he amazing. So here we have um, a flow model for our uh, mechanical thrombectomy device. This is a catheter with the same size that goes into the artery in the groin. Okay. And this is a micro catheter. It's called micro because it's less than a millimeter thick. Yeah. And that goes all the way we'll into the artery so in the brain. People can see that. There you go. See the, the string part right here. Look how thin that is. And that means a lot because before when we were cracking open things, as you mentioned, you, this can slide up an artery. Exactly, this can slide up an artery and allows us to uh, insert multiple devices, for example, for treating aneurysms, which you used to treat by open surgery. But for uh, stroke patients, we can insert thrombectomy devices. And if you see here, that's where the microcatheter ends. I'm going to deploy the stent retriever, which we've inserted already before. And as I push the stent retriever, I unsheath the microcatheter, and you can see the the device deployed. Yeah, I have one. <laughs> I have one here. I'd like to show you. Okay, I'm gonna move this over. Do you mind holding the tip? Okay. Okay. There we go. And then as I advance the microcatheter, this is how it comes out. Yeah. See that so little thing see that comes. Wow, thing. that's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. And this device has an outer um, uh, cage uh, that you can see over here and an inner channel. And when you combine them together, it allows to catch the blood clots that are inside mm -hmm. and also on the side of uh, the device. So when we pull the clots out, we get all the clots. We, we also combine this with aspiration, which is basically like a vacuum suction that uh, pulls the blood clots with it. I'm going to know the person who figured that out, <laughs> right? <laughs> and what's great about this, too, is that recovery. Yes. So patients after this will have a much greater chance of becoming functionally independent. Stroke is a very disabling condition. Mm -hmm. um, it's the number one cause of disability worldwide and in the United States. Um, uh, for every two patients that we treat with this technique, an additional person will become functionally independent, meaning that they don't need 
other people to take care of them. They can uh, go back to their previous activities of daily living. Yeah, the other thing that's kind of cool about this is that you all have like a network of doctors that you deal with, Big right? Yeah. And so when you're with the hospital system uh, like you all, that you can just basically uh, confer with each other and that there's just different things that might be done for different patients and it's all under kind of one hospital room. Exactly. And the thing that we decided to do is Houston has become a very big city. Mm -hmm. um, really, even uh, certain regions in Houston are as big as other cities in the country. Right. Um, the country I grew up in is the size of the North region in Houston. Oh, wow. <laughs> what country is that? Bahrain. It's wow. Oh, yeah. Country. Bahrain. Yeah. Oh, so my gosh. Um, uh, what we decided to do is in each region in, in the city to have a comprehensive stroke center that can take care of all cerebrovascular disease to a very, very high level. Yeah. So uh, patients within that region will go to their local regional comprehensive stroke center and get Again, care because there. time is, is of essence. Exactly. All right, awesome. And you have to be out there in the Woodlands. For more information or to book an appointment with Memorial Hermann, the Woodlands Medical Center, call 713-222-CARE. 713-222-CARE. That works out to be 713-222-2273. Or visit neuro.memorialherman.org. Thank you very much.